temperature. And in order to regulate her temperature, Gaia has had to extract carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to compensate for the increasing brightness of the sun over geological time. If she hadn't done this, the Earth would be by now far too hot for life. And she's put the carbon in various places. Most of it has gone into chalk and limestone. Um, and I can tell you about that process if you like. But Most people would probably think of coal and oil. No, that's quite a small, a small fraction of the carbon on the Earth. Most of it's coal and limestone. The, the next biggest... Uh, chalk and limestone. Uh, sorry, what did I say? Chalk and limestone. Sorry, chalk and limestone. Yeah. The next biggest um, reservoir or box, if you like, or bank account or vault. But it's better to think of it as a kind of vault. So as if she's trying to put the carbon in these vaults where it can be safely locked away out of the atmosphere. So the biggest is chalk and limestone. The second biggest is organic material dispersed through sedimentary rocks. And the fossil fuels is uh, quite a tiny amount of that, of the, of that uh, compared to those two. Why was it first then? But us using oil and gas? Ah, coal. because what the Earth, what Guy has done is managed to bring down the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to level, levels that are so low that plants can just about manage to live on it. Because, as you know, carbon dioxide, carbon, is a food for plants. It's a, a gaseous food that they take in through little pores underneath their leaves, right? It's a gaseous food. Um, so, the Gaia has managed to keep the CO2, bring it down as low as she possibly can without killing off the plants, in the face of a very bright sun. Yeah. So, if we then uh, open up one of those vaults, take out stored carbon from the Earth's crust and burn it, we then return carbon dioxide to the atmosphere and we make things much too hot. You could say it's good for the plants in the short term, which it probably is in the short term, but it makes the whole of Gaia so hot that it's a terrible danger for the whole biosphere. I'm not sure if I explained that, if you got the idea, yeah? So it's terribly dangerous. Is that Gaia needed to keep carbon out of the atmosphere in the face of a bright sun. We're now returning it to the atmosphere and so we're pushing the earth into a hot state which is extremely dangerous for us and for all other forms of life. So this the last thing we should be doing is burning fossil fuels or putting carbon into the atmosphere through any means whatsoever. But don't the plants just take it out again? Why, why can't the algae and the plants take it out again? Ah, well they can take out a certain amount um, but they can't do, can't take it all, not at the rate that we're putting it out there. We're putting it out there at a phenomenally fast rate. Huge. I mean, it might be, it has happened before, about 55 million years ago, there was a massive release of carbon dioxide long before we were around. Um, and that was dealt with very slowly, and the sun was slightly less bright then. But um, at the moment, the biosphere, the ocean life and the land life can absorb about half of what we emit. The rest of it stays in the atmosphere. And that half then, the half that remains in the atmosphere, then pushes the Earth into a, a warmer state, which begins to kill off the biosphere. For example, the algae don't like a warm ocean. They do better with a cold ocean. Because if the ocean gets too warm, you get a warm layer of water forming on the top and nutrient-rich water from the sediments below can't reach the surface and the algae starve to death. So as we warm the world by pumping greenhouse gases into its atmosphere, the oceans get warmer, the algae begin to die off, and so we lose two Gaian services that they give us, if you like. One is the absorption of carbon dioxide through photosynthesis, and the dumping of that carbon into the sediments at the bottom of the ocean. And the second is the production of clouds, because these algae emit gases which seed clouds, mm -hmm. dense white clouds that cool the earth. You actually mean that when I'm looking at uh, a cloud that's been made by algae and bacteria? In part, yes. Not entirely. Some of it's seeded by dust, um, 
But yes, especially over the oceans. If you look at clouds over the oceans, they'll be, to a large extent, seeded by uh, marine algae. They release these gases, uh, a gas called dimethyl sulfide, which then reacts with oxygen and nitrogen in very complicated ways to give little particles of sulfur dioxide, sulfuric acid basically, that water just loves to condense around. It's like throwing breadcrumbs into a pond with fish. All the fish just coalesce around breadcrumbs and then you, the breadcrumbs are the particles of, of sulfur dioxide. The fish are water, bits of water. So you get these dense white clouds forming that cool the earth. And if, as we warm the earth, we lose these cooling services from the algae. And as we warm the earth, of course, the plants begin to have a harder time as well. Um, water becomes harder for them to deal with. Um, sometimes in some areas, if, they, if the weather patterns change, they suffer from water stress. Um, and so they begin to die off, they burn, and they release more carbon to the atmosphere, which warms the earth even further. It looks very bleak. I mean, as, as we were saying earlier, we're in the middle of a mass extinction right now. So we're losing species. It's like hemorrhaging species, as if someone's cut your jugular and blood's just pouring out. That's how we're losing species now on the planet. Unbelievably fast as we both warm up the earth and kill off species that way and kill them directly by deforestation or overfishing. So um, the state of the earth now is... It, the earth is in a very bad state. If I would com compare it to a, a social system, it would be like um, the collapse of the Roman Empire, perhaps. So the earth is in a state of meltdown right now. It's like a very, that very beautiful, complex configuration that she had evolved into when we first appeared on the earth with phenomenal, the biggest, the highest levels of biodiversity ever seen on earth. Tremendously complex and rich interactions in the tropical regions with the northern oceanic regions full of cloud seeding algae uh, with tremendous boreal forests and uh, desert areas. All of that now is changing and melting down. We're, we're losing that fantastic complexity. If you talk to some climate scientists, they will tell you that uh, it's severe, but it's not apocalypse, that it's not there will be, there are now inevitable changes, but we might be able to deal with them if we start reducing our carbon emissions now. So everyone agrees that it's a serious situation, but some people think that we can deal with it by reducing carbon, by, um, you know, these famous wedges by um, Sokolow, I think it is, that you just energy efficiency, carbon reduction measures, and we can get a hold, get a grip on it now. There's still time to get a grip. Whereas others, like Jim Lovelock, yeah. as you know, um, I say that it's already too late mm. because the changes now that have been set in place cannot be reversed. One e example he gives is the loss of sea ice, particularly in the Arctic, which is disappearing catastrophically fast. And you can do a simple calculation that shows that just the sea that will be exposed to the sunlight, the dark sea exposed to the sunlight, will be in, in the Arctic Circle once the sea ice is gone. Um, it will be enough to warm the Earth as much as we've warmed it already th through our emissions of greenhouse gases, which is a, a lot, it's nearly one degree centigrade. So that's a huge amount. And once that starts, you see it's a positive feedback. Once the Earth warms, these effects propagate around the entire system. The Amazon forests disappear, the boreal forests march northwards with their dark green leaves and warm the planet even further. Permafrost permafrost melts. So we end up in this, well, it's called a, a tipping point or a series of tipping points mm -hmm. in which suddenly this whole system shifts from one steady state to another steady state incredibly fast in a non-linear way, very, very quickly. You know, small effects you would have thought had, would have small consequences, but small effects suddenly propagate through the whole system and bring about catastrophic changes.